there are certain things that are done that disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are certain things that are done that are haram. What are these things? We will try to summarize them in several points. Wa sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Number one, music. You will rarely enter a, a wedding that does not have music. Rarely. You go into a wedding and music is not being played. Only a handful of youth that choose not to have music part of their weddings and they play something else, an ashid or uh, religious songs. Not so much music, but, but the vast majority from various cultures, whatever culture you go to, many of them, they have music and their weddings. Some go far as to have to bring a DJ in their wedding. Have a DJ play music in their wedding. Some of them are willing to spend a lot of money on music at their wedding. My dear friends, music is haram. Whether it's at a wedding or at a funeral, music is haram. Whether it's at work or at the gym or in your car or on your phone, music is music and music is haram. And there are no exceptions. There's no exceptions. Weddings are not exceptions to uh, the per permissibility of of music. There are some people who think that music is haram unless it's at a wedding. If it's at a wedding, it's okay. Raise the volume. It's fine. Who told you? Who told you weddings are exceptions? Weddings are not exceptions. Music is haram wherever you go. Wajtanibu qawl az-zur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and avoid vain talk. A hadith of Ahlul Bayt say this is music. This is singing and music. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ In Surah Al-Mu'minun, among the qualities of the mu'mineen, the believers. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Those who avoid vain talk, vain speech. Narrations of Ahl bayt say this is music, this is singing. Let me ask a question. At your wedding, you're starting a new life with a new person. Do you want shayateen to be present or do you want angels? Ask yourself this question. Who do you want present? Do you want shayateen? Have all the music that you want. And you'll have a lot of shayateen. You'll have shaytan and his army dancing at your wedding. But do, is that what you want? Or do you want angels at your wedding? Do you want angels to be present and have your marriage, your wedding, to be a blessed, which one do you want? You choose. Is this how you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, find for finding you someone that's suitable for you, that's compatible with you? Someone who will complete your life? Someone who will share the rest of your life with you? Is this how you thank Allah? By beginning your marriage, your wedding day with music? This is how you thank Allah? Yes, on, on the other hand, there are some people, you know, may Allah bless them. There's no music at their wedding. Instead, they, they begin their weddings with Quranic recitation, with Hadith al kisa with religious uh, poetry and anashid, perhaps with a lecture. I've, I've been invited to some weddings to give a lecture. Some of you are thinking, are, you know, what a boring wedding. To have the Sayyid speak at that uh, wedding. Well, some they choose to have that. They like to listen maybe to a word of advice on marriage, on how a husband should treat his wife, on how a, a, how a wife should treat her husband. Some choose that. They want their wedding to be an Islamic wedding. You know, I tell some people this. When I speak about this, about music at weddings, some people say, but Sayyid, you know, if I don't have music at my wedding, my wedding is going to be boring. Who's going to come to my wedding if there's no music? And if they come thinking that there's music, and then there's no music, 
my wedding will be remembered as the most boring wedding in history. And I don't want that. I want people to enjoy my wedding, to have a good time at my wedding. I want to have, you know, good memories. The answer, number one, you don't necessarily need to have music. Play religious songs. Play religious anashid. Play poetry and songs of Ahlul Bayt, of the remembrance of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Dhikru Ali and Ibadah. The remembrance of Ali ibn Abi Talib is a form of worship. Have that instead. That's an alternative that you could have at your wedding. Let's start this trend. If one person does it, two, three, four, becomes a trend in the community. And we can end, we can put a stop to music at our weddings. This is one. Two, two, so what? Would you rather have a wedding that's boring or would you, or would you rather have a wedding that disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You're disobeying Allah in that wedding. You're beginning your life with this life partner of yours by disobeying Allah from the first day, from the first start. Which one would you rather have? Be boring or disobey Allah? I'm sure all of you would choose to be boring. Even though you could make your wedding not boring. Just because there's no music, it doesn't mean that your wedding will be boring. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now let's go a step further. There are some that not just have music, but there's also what? There's dancing at their weddings. There's dancing. Now, let, and I'm talking about, and I'm, not, I'm talking about weddings that are not mixed. Men are by themselves. Women are by, the, women are by themselves. Well, obviously, men would not be dancing by themselves. That doesn't happen. But women in some cultures, in some countries, Islamic countries, women get up and dance. According to a lot of scholars and maraja, this is not allowed. This is not allowed. Some people think that as long as it's an all-woman wedding, or it's, it's uh, separated, it's segregated, women can play music, and they could dance. Who told you? Who told you? Who said this? Which marja said this? This is not allowed. Even if it's a se segregated wedding. This is not allowed. Music is not allowed. And dancing is not allowed, according to a lot of scholars. Yes, maybe you might find one or two that say it's allowed, but according to most scholars, this is not allowed. This is, we're talking about segregated weddings, let alone mixed weddings. Let alone mixed weddings. Men and women are together, there's music being played, there's a DJ and there's a dance floor. And before you know it, there, there are Muslims at this wedding and they're dancing. They're dancing. What sort of wedding is this? Have we forgotten all of our principles? Have we forgotten about, about our religion and our faith? What sort of marriage do we want to begin? This is a place for shaitan. You're inviting shaitan. You're telling him, welcome to my wedding. Come and do whatever you'd like. This is your playground. Come and do as you please. Is that what you want? I know in some communities, inshallah, this doesn't exist in this community. But there are some people listening to me online. I know in some communities, I will not mention names. Here in North America, in some communities, there's mixed weddings, there's dancing, and they videotape it, and then they go and put it on YouTube for everyone to see that at their wedding, there was dancing. The husband, the bride, the groom danced with his bride. The father danced with his daughter that's a bride. He's proud of it. And he's willing to have everyone in the community see it. It's on the internet. Isn't this a shame? That's it. We've forgotten our principles, our values, our ethics, our manners. We came to Canada. We have to be purely Canadian. And pick up all of the values. And we have to have a Canadian wedding. We came to America. We came to Australia. We came to the UK. We came to 
Europe. We have to have a European wedding. We have to have an American wedding. We have to have an, have an Australian wedding. That's it. We've forgotten all of our values. This is not right. I hope that we can put an end to this dancing at our at our weddings. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Another thing that I have to address is mixed weddings. Mixed weddings. Where there's men and women together in the same hall and the women are dressed up in the fanciest clothing, in the tightest clothing. There's makeup. You know, and I wish it was simple makeup. But there's like 10 pounds or kilos of makeup and perfume and cologne and all that and they're mixed and it's perfectly fine. And it's as if there's nothing wrong. You know, if it's segregated, women could wear whatever they'd like. Go to a segregated wedding, there's no man seeing you. Put on as much makeup as you want. Knock yourself out. Wear whatever you'd like. But if it's a mixed wedding, there's one hall. Men and women are seeing each other. They're sitting next to each other on the same table. This is wrong. Just because it's a wedding, it doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it, it, doesn't make it okay. Just because it's a wedding. They're mixed. The makeup, the hijab, the, or lack of hijab. Not the hijab, but the lack of hijab. This is not right. This is not right. You know, at some weddings, there's some people that look forward to going to weddings because they know that people are going to be dressed up. The guys are going to be dressed up and the girls are going to be dressed up. Basically, it's going to be a fashion show. Obviously, you're going to look forward to those weddings. If it's a fashion show and it's mixed, there's men and women going together, that becomes a fashion show. Do we want our wedding and our marriage to have blessings or no? Or to have la'na from Allah and from the angels? Do you want angels to come and bless our weddings or to come and curse us and curse our weddings? We must end this culture, my dear friends. The culture of mixed weddings. This must end. This must end. You know, I might sound weird for saying this, but this is, this is the truth. Someone has to say this. We have to end the culture of mixed weddings. We have two choices. We have two choices. Either end the culture of mixed weddings, there's a hall for men, and there's a hall for women, and you could do whatever you'd like. Men could dress however they'd like, and women could dress however they'd like, and they could put as much makeup as they'd like. Or the other option is that have a joint wedding, a mixed wedding, but ladies cannot dress up and no makeup. You decide. You decide which one's easier. Of course, the thought of going to a wedding without makeup, that's unheard of. That's unheard of. So your option is, segregate them. Have a hall for women and have a hall for men. No mixing. This is the Islamic option. It's not just about the mixing, you see? Some people say, well, Sayyid, are you saying that mixing is haram? Are you saying that at our homes, if we invite guests, we can't sit together? The problem is not with the mixing. The problem is what comes with the mixing. The getting dressed, the lack of hijab, there's no scarf, there's no hijab. There's makeup, there's perfume. It's these things that come with the mixing. But if there's perfect hijab, the lady's covered. She has a scarf on. There's no makeup. There's, there's nothing wrong with mixing. So it's not about the mixing, it's about the things that come with the mixing. That's the problem.